400,000. That's how much smithing experience you can be getting from the blast furnace every hour. There's just one little problem. This guy charges you 72,000 gold every hour just to train here. So how can you get all of your money's worth? What is up, scapers? My name is Fancy, and today we are going to talk all about making gold bars at the Blast Furnace. For anyone who isn't aware, the Blast Furnace is located in the dwarven city of Keldegrim, and it offers two main advantages compared to a standard furnace that you would find all over Gilinor. The first is that it smelts your entire inventory at once. Yep, no more slowly making bars while you watch Netflix. The entire inventory is just done in seconds, just like that. The second benefit is that it requires half the usual amount of coal compared to a regular furnace. So if you were going to make an adamant bar at a normal furnace, that would usually require one addy ore and then six pieces of coal. At the blast furnace, it only requires one addy ore and three pieces of coal. And over time, that would really add up. So if you're planning to make a lot of bars, this is definitely the go-to. That being said, today we are going to be focusing strictly on gold. Okay, a little carried away there, but I, I do just love gold. I mean, who doesn't? Let's just give a quick overview and get all of the requirements out of the way. The Blast Furnace is located in Keldegrim, so that means you need to have at least started the Giant Dwarf quest to use it, and afterwards, you can quickly get there by using this little trap door here at the Grain Exchange. Run downstairs in this building and you'll be met with the most beautiful furnace you've ever seen in your entire life. Now, there is a lot going on down here, but basically you have two options. You can figure out how to operate all of the machinery yourself, or just pay the dwarves to do it for you. Which is always a better option, like, it's easier. <laughs> Don't overthink it, just hop to the Blast Furnace Worlds. They're all indicated as such in the world hopper, and let's keep it moving. As for what's down here, let's talk about it. This is the bank chest. You should know what that does. This little coin pouch right here is called the coffer, and you put money into it to pay the workers when you're on a blast furnace world. Don't worry about putting too much in, you can always just withdraw anything extra you put. And over here we have the conveyor belt. This is where you deposit all of your ores. And then they all get sent to this guy right here, the bar dispenser. This is where you collect all of the bars that have been made. And finally, last of all, the big man himself, the Blast Furnace Foreman. If you're 60 smithing or higher, just be nice, say hi to him, and you're good to go. If you're below 60 smithing though, you need to give him a small bribe of 2500 gold every 10 minutes. And don't worry about forgetting, the game will remind you. And that is in order for him to allow you to actually use the Blast Furnace. Because the experience here is so fast, you can get from like 40 to 60 smithing in like 45 minutes. So you're not going to have to worry about this too much, but just FYI. And finally, if you're below 40 smithing, you just can't smith gold. So go get 40 smithing while you watch all my other videos. Thanks. Now, let's talk about what items you need and what items you probably want to have. First and foremost, you need gold ore. A lot of gold ore. That much should be obvious. Aside from that, you're going to need ice gloves, which you get from killing the ice queen, and you're going to need goldsmithing gauntlets, which you get as a reward from the family crest quest. Weight reducing items will also be massive here. If you have the graceful outfit, whip it out. If not, there's plenty of other options such as boots of lightness, spottier cape, and penance gloves, which will help you out a little bit. If you're only going for like 70 smithing to get like Song of the Elves or Dragon Slayer 2 done, it's really not so bad without any weight reducing items. But if you plan to be here for a while, I really recommend doing some rooftops and grinding out the graceful set. Some other items that you'll be wanting are stamina potions, so that you never need to stop running because if you're walking, you're wasting time and therefore losing experience. This also means that items like an explorer's ring that can recharge your run energy may be very useful here, but an even better option would be the ring of endurance, which while it is a bit expensive and it's not strictly required, it's probably the biggest convenience item to have here. So highly recommended if you can afford it, but not needed. And just for reference, when I'm making my own alts, I get 70 smithing at the blast furnace without graceful or a ring of endurance. So it's totally possible and it's really not that bad. It's just a bit more clicking. Okay, now let's talk about how it works and what's actually happening. 
I think this is best explained by me just doing a run to show you how fast it is and then just breaking it down step by step. Start at the bank. You should be wearing your ice gloves with your goldsmithing gauntlets in your inventory. Now withdraw 27 gold ore. From the bank screen, you can click directly on the conveyor belt and your character will path to it automatically. Once you see your character deposit the ores, run over to the bar dispenser and collect the bars. After clicking to withdraw all of the bars, quickly switch to your goldsmithing gauntlets and you'll receive an XP drop around 1400 smithing experience. That's how you know you did it right. From here, just run to the bank, deposit the bars, and start it all again. But that was slow. Very, very, very slow. One thing that you may have noticed is that after depositing the ores, we had to wait at the bar dispenser before we could actually collect the bars. This is because it actually does take a bit of time to make the bars. But there is a trick that we can do, one that I don't think I've ever seen explained in a video before, and I'm really not sure why. When you're first starting out, instead of collecting your first inventory of bars, leave them in the dispenser. Just like this, I run one inventory of ore to the conveyor belt, and then I run straight to the bank. I withdraw another inventory of gold ore and run that to the conveyor belt. This way, there's always going to be bars waiting for you in the dispenser, and each run you're basically picking up the last run's bars. This means no more waiting. With this one simple trick, you can actually withdraw the bars from the dispenser without needing to stop. So, if you watch here, I basically just run past it and collect everything I need almost instantly. You really don't even see me stop. Now, if you're really paying attention, you probably also noticed a little bit of shenanigans going on with the gloves right there. So, let me explain what's actually going on. Just like taking some fresh cookies out of the oven, an inventory of fresh bars straight from the furnace will be hot. So, you need to wear your ice gloves to cool them down. The issue is that you need to wear your goldsmithing gauntlets to get the bonus XP from making bars. So what do you do? Fortunately, we're in luck. When you click to withdraw the bars, you get this pop-up, which we just press spacebar to skip past. But then the game actually gives us a second pop-up where it says, you take 27 gold bars from the dispenser. I don't know why I said it like that. And the XP is hidden behind this text box. So instead of clicking here to continue, we can equip our goldsmithing gauntlets at this time and the game will actually think we've had them equipped the whole time and give us the bonus XP. So it works out great. Now the timing on this is a little bit challenging to learn, but there are some ways to make it easier, which I'll get into in just a minute. But just remember that everything takes time. I know these things can be frustrating as you're learning, but just keep at it because I really do know that you can do it. Okay, now let's talk about how we can use Runelight to our advantage. First off, we have Object Markers. This is a default plugin, but I mark all of the things I'm constantly clicking. This means the conveyor belt, the bar dispenser, the bank chest, and I know this may sound silly, but I think it just makes it so there's slightly less to think about, which helps when doing long repetitive grinds. Next up, we have Ground Markers. I normally just highlight a tile or two around this area that I try to click on every single time. This is really just for consistency and help to ensure that my pathing never changes. After that, we have Anti-Drag. This makes it so that it takes ever so slightly longer before you can drag an item around your inventory, which is nice because when you're doing methods like this, you never need to drag an item or rearrange your inventory. And at the Blast Furnace, if you drag an item by accident, it's probably gonna mess up your rhythm, costing you both time and experience. As always, I use Entity Hider. I just turn everything off. I don't want any distractions or chances to misclick. So I turn off players, I turn off NPCs, I turn off pets, I turn off randoms, everything that I can turn off, I turn off, aside from myself, of course. Like, I know this is an MMO, but when I'm at the Blast Furnace, it's alone time. Next up, we have Custom Menu Swaps. This is a massive one, but you'll need to download it off the plugin hub. Make sure to download this one from this guy, not sure how you say it, but once you have it downloaded and turned on, it allows you to hold shift and right click an item in your bank and change your withdraw option for that item specifically. So in this instance, I'm going to right click my stamina potion and set it to withdraw one. And this will allow me to withdraw one stamina potion as needed while also being able to withdraw all of my gold ore at the same time. Now, I know some people are concerned about the plugin hub, so you can achieve a similar result via the menu entry swapper, which is a default plugin, but you'll have to hold shift to withdraw one stamina at a time. So open it up and look for UI swaps and then look for bank with. 
It actually says bank withdraw shift click, but most of it will be cut off. Either way, just change that to withdraw one or withdraw X, and then you would have to set your X to a value of one, just like you do in your bank as per usual. And then once again, we can now hold shift, allowing us to withdraw a single stamina potion and then release shift to withdraw a full inventory of gold ore. Now, all that's left is really banking. And I think there's two main ways that you can choose to set everything up. The first way and the way that I think is actually better is via bank tag layouts. Again, this is in the plugin hub and it's actually made by the same guy as the last plugin. So just download this bad boy, open it up and make sure that enable layout by default is enabled. What we're gonna do is make a new bank tab and name it something like blast furnace. And we are gonna drag all of the relevant items into this tab. What's special about this tab is that it's not actually rearranging your actual bank. And you can actually put the items in any order or move them anywhere. Like, look at this. So I'm going to put all of my gear up here because I'll only need to use it once. And then I'm going to put all of my stamina potions and gold ore down here because I'll be using it constantly. And I want to put it as close as possible to the deposit inventory button, which you should be using. In order to not deposit your gloves, all you need to do is find them in your bank and withdraw them and then just remove the placeholder. Then go up to settings and we are going to fill the bank with placeholders. Now, as you can see, we can instantly deposit everything and then get out anything that we may need for the run very quickly. And again, with Blast Furnace, time is money and experience, mainly experience. Now, again, I know that not everyone likes using the plugin hub. So if you don't want to use it, you can simply drag your gold ore and stamina potions all the way to the top of your bank into these slots. Just pick whatever feels more comfortable for you. Now, once again, just remove the placeholders for your gloves and fill your bank with bank fillers and you're good to go. I know this seems much easier, but after you set up a bank tags once, it's like a preset that's saved forever, which I really like. I genuinely believe it's like one of the best plugins in the entire game, and I actually made a video about it, which you should definitely watch. <laughs> Next up, I also recommend screen markers. I know this is normally used by like only the sweatiest of sweaty players, but Blast Furnace is a place where the better you click, the more XP you'll get. So you really want to do everything possible that you can to ensure that you have the most accurate clicks. Screen markers are another default plugin that you can set up very quickly. Just click the green plus in the top right corner and then hover your mouse over something, anything, and you should see a small outline around it. Click to confirm that the box looks good and then head over to the side and you should see another green check mark. Click on that and then that screen marker will be set up. You can click the little eye icon to enable or disable the overlays. And personally, I like to mark the deposit inventory button as well as my gold ore, so I can ensure that I get the speediest of speedy withdrawals. Finally, marking your true tile. When you move in RuneScape, your character is actually a few tiles in front of where it looks like you are. This may not sound too significant, but I'll explain how we use this shortly. The two main options that you can use are either by using the Tile Indicators plugin and enabling the Highlight True Tile option, or what I prefer is to once again head over to the plugin hub and use the visual metronome plugin, as I find this just has more features and better features. Just enable the true tile overlay and disable anything else you may not want. These are my settings here. You should now be able to see the tile under your character flashing every other tick. Well, at least for me, depends on your settings. Now, it's really just a matter of putting everything together. So let's do a run or two with everything set up and I can give a few tips and tricks along the way. Before starting, I always just make sure that everything is set up properly. I don't want to ruin my rhythm once I've begun, so I just double check that I have tons of money in the coffer. Again, you can always just withdraw it if you need to. And then I just make sure that my bank is set up, my inventory is set up, and that I already have a stamp potion taken down. After withdrawing my gold ore, I tend to click somewhere around this area because it just feels easier for me, and you want to get in and out of the bank as quickly as possible. The bank is probably the biggest time loss for most players. And learning how to bank quickly will help you get better rates while doing basically any skill in the game. So after clicking here to leave the banking screen, I start moving and try to click the conveyor belt as soon as possible. I also use this time to make sure that I'm wearing the ice gloves. When you get to the conveyor belt, your character will stand still for a brief moment. But as soon as you see the ores leave your inventory, you need to be clicking over here to start moving again. This is where your true tile indicator comes in handy. Make sure that you're holding the spacebar down 
and as soon as you see your tile indicator next to the bar dispenser, right here, click on the dispenser. Continue holding spacebar, click on your goldsmith and gauntlets, and then click around this area to continue moving once again. If done correctly, you should quickly withdraw all of your bars and receive the bonus XP from the goldsmith and gauntlets. Once you start moving again, just click on the bank chest and you are good to go. One thing to mention here is that sometimes you'll notice that you don't get an XP drop immediately after picking up the bars. This doesn't happen too often, but do just be aware of this because sometimes it is okay to put your ice gloves back on immediately after you grab the bars, but occasionally it's not. So I tend to put my ice gloves back on when I'm running to the conveyor belt to help mitigate this, but just pay attention. As you approach the bank, make sure that you're hovering your mouse over the screen marker that shows where your deposit inventory button will be. And as soon as the bank opens, you are pressing that button. From there, just withdraw your gold ore and get back to running. Another thing that I'll mention is that most people use one dose stamina potions here, but if you're low agility or don't have a graceful or weight reducing items like me in this clip, you can always use a two dose stamina potion instead. You're not sitting at the bank and drinking the potion, you are withdrawing it and then drinking it while you run. So with the two dose potion, I drink one sip as soon as I leave the bank, and then I drink the second sip on my way back to the bank, which lets me get the most out of the potion. I also personally use Vile Smashing, which you can enable or disable by talking to this guy at the Barbarian Outpost. It basically just lets you choose between having an empty vial in your inventory or having nothing after you drink the last dose. And if you're a crazy person who wants to click on the ore to deposit all, instead of using the deposit inventory button, then at least you don't need to also click to deposit a vial. Well, I think that's going to be it for this one. I really do hope this guide can help some players out because I legitimately could not find a proper guide on running gold at the Blast Furnace. Everything was either a very casual guide or a super high level gameplay video without any explanations. So I know personally I was completely stuck and I needed to ask for help. Anyways, I am a long way past that point and I hope after this video, you can start working on your journey past that point as well. So if you have any questions, if you learned something, or if you feel like I missed something, let me know down in the comments below. If you have any requests for any other guides, let me know as well and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching, like, comment, and subscribe. I love you all. Goodbye.